Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the initialization of uh, unified CCX. So here are the steps that we would be performing during the integration or initialization of UCCX. So the first step that we would be performing is uh, creating the application user uh, with the role of standard AXL API access. So when we start the initialization of UCCX, it would ask the AXL provider IP address and the username and password so that it can contact the AXL pro provider and authenticate, it, authenticate itself with the um, AXL server. So the first step is to create the application user with the standard AXL API access role. Let me open the access control group here. We would be creating group and we'll assign the a standard AXL API access role to that. And then we'll assign the application user to this group. First, let me create a new group. This is going to be for UCCX AXL access control group. I'm going to add the role, click assign role to the group. Let me search for AXL. So we need to add the role of standard AXL AP access. Click save. Go back to the access control group that we created. Let's go ahead and click that and make sure we have the proper group, sorry, proper role selected or assigned. So let me go over to the application user. We're going to create an application user here. The application user name is UCCX Excel user. The password. Let me reconfirm the password. And then we're going to assign the group here. So we can see the access control group that we created. Select that and add selected. And save the setting. So that you can see that we have the, we have created a application user with the permission of standard AXL API access. Let me copy this username. Let me navigate over to the slide again. So next part is the defining connection parameters into the AXL service provider. So this step we would be performing in unified CCX app administration page. So let me navigate to the Unified CCX administration page. So this is the Unified CCX administration page. You can open this by providing the IP address of the server slash app admin, application admin, which will take us to the login page of the Unified CCX. And we can see this here. So we would be providing the username and password that we provided during the generation of answer file. Please remember that this is going to be a one time or until we finish up the initialization of UCC, we can use this credential. But after that, we have to select uh, another administration, UCCX administrator credential or administrator username. So let's, let's go ahead and log in with this right now. Okay, so this is the first step. So we are gonna do the fresh install. So let me select this, it's already selected for you. If you are grading from previous CCX releases, you have to go with that. But in this lab, we are doing the fresh installations. So this is already selected, click next. And here is the AXL server IP address. Usually the AXL server is the CUCM. Let me provide the publisher IP address here. 
dot lab n and the username is this that we recently created and provide the password and click next so it's a time for the uccx to go and contact the unified communication manager and authenticate with the help of this axl username and password if this axl username is not configured correctly you would not be able to get into the next section where we can upload the license so here we are in the next section next wizard for the initialization so we can confirm that our application user that we recently created worked so let me browse and upload the license to the uccx here you can see that i have a lot of different license files uh, if you can open this iso file this is the iso file of the uccx application um, so if you can open this iso file you would find a folder called demo license you can download the license from this folder it is it is coming with iso by default you can use the license which is available here so you have four different types of licenses that is coming with the iso file one is the premium package that we discussed enhanced and the standard and we also have one more package or one more license type which is called ip ivr which doesn't provide any ACD functions like agent selection or queuing. It is only provide the IVR functions, such as prompting the callers or collecting the digits. So that is the main function of this package. It cannot work as a standalone machine. If you're only looking for IVR, then you can go for it. But if you're looking for uh, at certain point of time, if you want to transfer the call to the agent, this package cannot work in the standalone mode. It has to work with the unified communication, sorry, unified contact center enterprise server. So this package is for UCC, which provides IVR functions. But in this lab, we are going to install this premium demo license. Click next. So it is in the process of adding the license file to the UCCX and it would validate the license file. Unfortunately, the license file that I added is not accepted by the UCCX server. I also have a 9.0 premium demo license. Let me go ahead and upload that to the server and see if that is accepted by the server. Let me click next. I'm sure this would be a, this license file would be accepted. I don't know why they, um, they provided the CCX 8.5 license with the iso file of um, 9.0.1 but i have downloaded this from the internet and it should be accepted by the server i have tried this before so we can see that the validation of the license file is completed so let's click next so we are in the component activation page and as this is a publisher all of these components would be activated and hope you remember that we already discussed about all of these components in our first section this node manager itself is a not comp not a component but it's a kind of service other are the component that we discuss such as unified ccx engine which is a mandatory component and should be activated on all servers in the cluster and the database component which consists of the agent data store the configuration data store the historical data store and the repository data store so we have those two components that those are mandatory components and the two optional components are cisco monitoring and recording they are also activated so we are going to use only a single machine so this would be a standalone unified ccx server so we are going to activate all the components here and once it's complete with the activation of all the components we'll proceed with the next wizard so the component act activation is successful. Let me click next. So this is the publisher activation. You can see this database stores are listed here. When I click next, let's start activating those three data source. So here we are in the unified CM configuration page where we would be providing the AXL and CDI uh, server informations here. So let me go ahead we already provided this during the first step 
we already configured this IP. So let me move my subscriber to the selected AXL service provider list. I have seen in documents provide the publisher as a primary and subscriber as a secondary. So let me leave the publisher as a primary. And here's the user that we created. We all remember about the subsystem we discussed previously, the unified CM telephony subsystem and the RM CM subsystems. So we're going to add the CTA manager for those subsystem to function. So first we are going to add the subscriber as a primary CDA manager for the CM telephony subsystem and the publisher unified CM as a secondary node for the CDA manager providing the CDA manager service. And also we would be providing the username. I would be providing such as JTAP, which provides the JDB functions and the password. Let me confirm the password. When I do this, this step you can see that we are providing the username, password, and confirm password. When do we confirm the password? When would we provide the confirm password during the authentication? No. We provide confirm password whenever we want to create a new username with a password, right? So when we do this, it this UCCX go and contact the call manager with this privilege, with this AXL privilege, and create the JRP username for us. Okay. So let me add the uh, CDA manager for the RM CM subsystem to function. Again, subscriber as a primary and the publisher as a secondary. Here I'll be giving RM CM as a username and password let me confirm the password so click next when I click next this process is going to add this node to the CTA manager list for the unified CM subsystem and the RM CM subsystem and also UCCX go and contact the call manager and create these two users as an application user in the CUCM I'll show you that. Let me click next. So we have set up the JDAP service account. We also set up the RMCM service account for CDA communication. So next is picking the proper codec. Let me go to the browser. It is still in the process of creating those application users. Let me navigate over to the CUCM and check the application user to see if they are created. So you can see now the JRAP username is created with number one. This one is for node number one. If you have a unified contact center express with two nodes, you would see two uh, unified CM subsystem user ID, uh, which would be like JRAP underscore one and JRAP underscore two. So let me go ahead and see. So this task is complete, completed. If I refresh this page, I would see two JRAP users, sorry, one JRAP user and one RMCM user. Like JRAP, the RMCM would not create two usernames for each node, it would be only creating one, which would be using for monitoring the agents. So let me navigate over to the UCCX and I'm going to select, the, I'm going to keep the Kodak as Z711. And the number of HR session, it depends on, it depends how much you need. I, this is for the lab. I don't even need five. Let me, let me give it to five for both. And the outbound seats to 25. It depends on the platform, G711, okay? So click next. Remember that these parameters can be changed for even after the initialization of UCCX from the system parameters page of the UCCX. I'll show you. We can also walk through those system parameters page and see um, if modification is needed. So we have uh, selected the codec, which is going to be G711. So if we, if you're adding prompts to the server, we should be adding those prompts in the G711 format. Next is the language configuration. 
So we're going to select ENUS and the CAD and CST language is going to be the English. You can see that please download and run the Cisco Unified CCX desktop client configuration tool after the setup is complete. This is mandatory. I'll also discuss more about the CCX desktop client configuration tool when we actually do it in the lab. Let me click OK for now. Let me click Next. It's in the process of updating the language. It'll take some time. So we have another task to perform which is to create the new UCC administration account. So let me go ahead to the end user page in CUCM. And I'm going to create end user here and will promote that as a UCCX administrator. So we are in the end user page. I may click fine. There shouldn't be any user at this point. Let me go ahead and create a new user, which I would be promoting that user as a CCX administrator in UCCX. I'm going to give it the name UCCX admin and a password. Confirm the password. So last name is mandatory. I'm not going to give any other roles here because this user is going to be an administrator in UCCX. So I don't have to provide any other groups or role at this point. So let me navigate over to the UCCX. You can see that the language selection process is complete. So the next process is picking up the new UCCX administrator account. So let me go over to the UCCX. The username that I created is UCCX admin. Let me search for that. I can see that username in the end user list. Let me push this to the CCX administration window. When I click finish, that's all about the initialization of the UCCX. We would go into the summary page where we can see that the UCCX setup is complete. The unified CM configuration is done. We have uploaded the premium license. The component activation is done and activated these components in UCCX. And this is the publisher node which is activated successfully. And these data stores would run in the publisher. In system parameters, we updated about the codecs and other settings. We updated the language configuration as well. At the end, we selected the user who is going to be an administrator of Unified CCX. So that's all about this. Once the setup is completed, you can see that it's restarting the UCCX engine. So we just have to close this window and re-log in to the CCX administration window with the new credential that we created, which is UCCX admin. So now you can see that the, the initialization of UCCX is complete. At the end, we are, we are landed in Unified CCX Administration web page. With that said, I'm going to stop this lecture now, and I'll see you in next section. Thanks for watching.